Hey there everybody, it's Dr. Ogres, and welcome to episode 20 of my Let's Play of EVE Online. So today I think we're going to face one of the things that I think is probably the single most frightening thing in all of EVE. Uh, given a choice, I would rather have a noob ship trying to take down a Titan than to deal with this. But you gotta do it. You gotta do it. That's right. It's the corporation interface. You have to deal with it. If you set up a corporation, you must get this set up and you must set it up correctly. If you have shared hangers or any assets at all, a corp wallet with any ISK in it, for example, um, not having your roles and all that good stuff set up correctly will eventually get you robbed. <laughs> That's kind of the nature of Eve and corp thieves will take advantage of it. So you have to be able to do this correctly. And when you get onto alliance level stuff, it's even more complicated because um, obviously there are more people that have access to stuff and it, it becomes a lot more difficult to, to maintain it. And, and I mean, if history is any, any uh, 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 judge, obviously one disgruntled person can kick and disband your entire alliance, right? We've seen that happen once or twice. So at any rate, um, we're going to be doing that today. So we're going to take a look at, first off, the suggestions you guys came up with for corp names. And we're going to look at the votes, and we're going to pick which one we're going to go with. So let's see. Um, boom, fucking thuckers, Aperture Science, Cave Johnson. I like Cave Johnson, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, no votes on that one, probably just because there's three of them. Uh, do, 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 do. Tax Evasion. It's got three upvotes. Doctor's Domination. Da, ba, da, ba, da. Ogre Battle 64. Very good video game. I used to love that game. Uh, do, do. Uh, Battle Clinic. The Battle Clinic. We're clear on that. Tasty Beverage. 18 votes. All right. Tasty Beverage. I like it. It's um, something I say a lot and a reference to, of course, Pulp Fiction if you haven't seen it. Do you mind if I have some of your tasty beverage to wash this down? Um, so that seems to be our number one right now. The Last Nomads. Do 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 do. And Beauty and the Ogres. Doctor Ogres Clinic. The Tax Dodgers. Is there more? Uh, that seems to be it on this one. And let's take a look on the other one. Some people put them over here too. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see, let's see. Somebody wants more PvP, which is good. Altitude, because I, I, I will be allowing alts into the corp. Ulterior mode is 8, so that would be number 2. Okay, so it looks like Tasty Beverage is far and away our winner. So the Bamboni, congratulations. You are the winner of the corporation naming contest, I suppose. Uh, thanks a lot for all your suggestions, guys. I really like them all. But we're going to go with the one that got the most votes. 18 votes for Tasty Beverage, and that's the winner. So let's go ahead and get it set up. First things first, you have to have corporation management skill trained. So if we look at Dr. Overs over here, I train corporation management to one. Uh, this allows me to simply start a corp and have 10 members in it. That's, that's it. it. When I get level two, it's 20 members. Level three, 30 members, so on and so forth. Just like everything with Eve, there's more skills beyond this too. I think there's like empire management. There's something that you can have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of members in your corp if you have the right skills for it. And then I took anchoring just because eventually um, I will want to set up a, a control tower or something and I'll need that skill in order to do it. And that's one of those things. If I put out a control tower, I need to make sure that not just anybody can unanchor it and steal it and sell it and all the stuff I have in it. So <clears throat> so that's the uh, the general idea. So once you have that skill, you click the button over here that says Corporation, brings up the Corporation window. On the Home tab right at the bottom says Create New Corporation. So you hit that button and you come up to, this is the Corporation Creation page and we're gonna put the corp name right in here, Tasty Beverage. <clears throat> and then you pick a ticker. So, uh, TST Bev. Nope, too many letters. Uh, 
And nee, nee, nee. Mm, this is the hard part. This is the part I always. Gosh. Um, Mobev. For more beverages. And. What do you mean more unique? I tell you what. Tax rate, zero, zero, because this is a tax dodge first, first and foremost. The corp doesn't need any assets. Um, and then, of course, we can set up a corp logo, and we'll go through that in a second. What I want to get is uh, off of my bio, get my YouTube address, and set that up as the corp website. A haven from taxes application applications accepted for alt characters only no tax no assets no ops, no nothing. <clears throat> check out, check out my let's play. Okay, so then we create the corporation logo and you go through and it has three layers. Like so, like a major emblem. Let's see if we can find something that says tasty beverage to us. Stars and clovers and fleur de lis and onks and omegas and eyeballs and lobsters and. Hmm. Tasty beverage. The bullet's way too popular. <coughs> Biohazard nuclear. Let's see. Unicorn, yes, and a gray, golden unicorn on, uh, let's see, on a background that's a crown, and that's a, <laughs> that was the worst corp logo ever created. In the history of mankind. A red crown. No. Okay, let's... Castle? Okay, that's good. And then a... Uh, close. Now for layer three, we're going to go with... Solid color. And we're going to make it... White. Uh, let's see, where's the solid colors? How about that? No? How about that? 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 Oh, that's not too shabby, I guess. Meh. 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 Want something to offset our our unicorn so that it's it's clear what's going on with it. And let's really let's just uh, oh, it's too much. Need to make it clearer. Yeah, there we go. Moon, stars. Ooh, stars. I like stars. Stars are good. Unicorn stars. And let's let's change that from red. Uh, mm, this is hard. This is just so difficult. Uh, let's try something else. <coughs> uh huh. No, no. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> and this whole episode is just probably me doing this. So I'll probably speed this up. <laughs> yes. All right. And now we have a corporation. All right. I do not have a corporate Washington you selected. You will not be able to engage in any corporate literature, yada, 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 yada. This is fine. Um, so I'll just say yes and master wallet and okay. All right. So homepage, Tasty Bev. And you notice I'm the only one in corp left. Goodbye, CAS. Goodbye. I can add a bulletin here. This is not important stuff, but we're going to say... Did I close it already? I must have. Add bulletin. Hello and welcome. Tax evasion is fun. Alright, so and then anybody when they get into the corp can see this and... You can put important information about, you know, your event or login information and all that good stuff if necessary. Um, my main corp doesn't really use this too much. Okay, so let's take a look at something real quick. <clears throat> First and foremost, once you have this, you can rent offices in stations. So, like, this one costs 10000 ISK for a month to have an office here. And once you have offices, you can have corp hangers. And you can put stuff in them. Now, I'm not setting all that stuff up. But you're probably going to want to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because you'll have assets for a, a real corp that you want to share. It's one of the reasons you have real corp. It makes your members more effective so that you can share assets and all that good stuff. Now, in a corporation, you also have a corporation wallet. This is where you would pay bills. So if you go to automatic pay settings, for example, rental bills, broker bills, war bills, sovereignty bills, you can just select a division of your wallet. There's seven divisions. And you can look here, each division and what's in it. Uh, you can view journals. You can see who took from what, who added to what. Um, <clears throat> all that good stuff. And access to this stuff is all set up in here if you don't set it up properly people people can go ahead and just take everything out of your corp wallet and leave the corp they once the isk is in their wallet it's in their wallet you can't pull isk out of other people's wallets but they can if you don't have your roles and everything set up correctly um so first thing first um you have shares, there's a thousand of them. Uh, and you need to assign those to yourself, to your CEO. Uh, you give to Dr. Bowers. <clears throat> All right. That's so that you cannot be voted out as CEO. You want to make sure that that is secure first and foremost. So have your shares set to you. Um, if you want to give shares to somebody else, you can create more shares and pass them around, and that's fine. Shareholders get to vote in things like war decks, um, all that good stuff. And it's very important that you have tight control over who has the shares at any given time. It only takes five shares to vote a CEO out, just so you know. Um, <clears throat> Settings, same as always, uh, but the corporation wallet, make sure you have, um, if you're paying bills, make sure that those bills are set as paying automatically. Uh, they will show up here, uh, but if you pay the big ones, especially your rental for offices, wars, and sovereignties, um, that'll keep you from, you know, losing your war deck or losing your offices. Journal just shows you who put money in, who took money out of this active wallet division shares we've already talked about a little bit wallet divisions again you can view transactions transfer money to or from or set as active wallet view journal etc so on and so forth um, and then transactions again this is corp wide transactions same things for your wallet but it applies to the entire corporation so somebody on the behalf of the corporation could purchase stuff off the market they so if they needed this, if you have a, a control tower up and your corp is buying uh, fuel somebody could just set up those and those transactions would show up here but in order to make sure that nobody has access to that stuff we have to go through this window and get everything set up correctly 
This is not easy, uh, and it's actually kind of difficult, but it has to be done, and it has to be done properly. <clears throat> First and foremost, details. This is just what shows up when somebody gets info on your corporation. Offices, we obviously have none. We don't own any stations. Um, CEO and founder, that's me. Uh, headquarters just is where I founded the corporation at. So that's just boom. But we don't have an office there. But it doesn't really matter. Let's see. And if you go in offices, these are all the offices in this station. And these people actually uh, rent these off this office space on a monthly basis. So, but you could apply to a joint corporations from here, but that can also be done just by getting the corp name and hitting apply. Okay, so uh, also when you set up a corporation, it does cost you money. Um, not a ton. Uh, 1.6 basically million ISK. Uh, is what it costs. So you need to have that ISK before you set up the corporation. Uh, it's a one-time fee, and it's more if you set up an alliance, obviously. Um, so you need to make sure that that's done correct and in the right place. Recruitment, you don't need to really worry about. Um, members. This is will show you all the members you have in your corporation when they were last online. If you're the CEO, it'll show you when they were offline, online, what ship they're in, where they're located, titles and base. Title is important, and we'll get to that in a minute. Base is um, a special designation you can give to one of your offices that will allow uh, different levels of access to corporate hangars in a, in a given place. So you need to make sure that before you set up a base that you've got everything set up correctly. <clears throat> uh, and then we'll go through, so member enroll. Um, this is pretty complicated, uh, but there are these are the roles somebody can have in your corporation. So if you want to make sure that nobody has the accountant role that shouldn't, you know, you hit that and search, you know. Um, and I'm the only one in it, obviously. Uh, so it's one of those things that you need to be aware of how to use just in case you need it. But um, honestly, if you get your roles set up correctly, your titles and roles, this should never come into account. You should never be wondering who has access to such things. Um, <clears throat> right. Okay. So that comes to role management. Role management is when we look at what kind of access somebody has in our corporation. So let's get this wider real quick. Can they fuel our starbase? Can they operate the guns of the starbase? Uh, can they accept applications into the corp? Can they look at transactions in the wallet? Can they save uh, fittings to the corp fitting hang, uh, management? Are they a director of the corp? That means a lot of things. They can they basically have access to everything if they're a director. Are they a diplomat of the corp? Uh, are they a contract manager? Can they buy and sell stuff on the contract market for the corp? Can they anchor and unanchor stuff at the um, Control towers, uh, config equipment, can they, you know, access to CANs, communications officer is, can they send out things on behalf of the corporations, auditors, can they look in, and adjust things in the wallet, accountant basically has all access to the entire wallet. And then they have them in different services. These are just general. So that's just the first layer. And then there's station services. And then there's the accounting, who has access to what wallet divisions, hangar access. You know, which if, if we had a corp hanger, would they be able to get into this? Would they be able to look at it? Would they be able to take from it? Look and take, look and take. Uh, container access, same thing. In the corp hanger, can they take from a container? Uh, you can set this up so that you can have containers for people to drop into, but they can't remove stuff from. Hanger access based at. And remember when I said that um, you have base? This is what I'm talking about. If you're based at a certain place, you can have different hangar access. So for example, if your corporation has a, uh, a staging system for new recruits where you have some simple T1 ships and ammo free for use, you could just give them free access to everything there and you don't have to worry about it. Um, but at some point, you're gonna wanna set up one of these for very important stuff. Like the corporation, if you own several you know control towers you're going to want to have them in a safe of some sort so that not just anybody can get to them 
in in my main court, the only people who can touch that stuff is the CEO and the directors. And that's the way we leave it. There's three of us, and that's that's already, you know, two people more than we can really trust. <laughs> but uh, since we've known each other for so long time, we 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 rely on that. Okay, so container access, same thing. If based at, so if I'm based at a station, can I take from the containers in these control these hangar accesses? Hangar access other, um, and this is kind of a confusing one, but it basically means uh, not in a station or an office. So that's a control tower, things like that. Container access, other, same deal. Because uh, you can float, um, you can anchor corp hangers uh, out in space around a control tower. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. So you could add, once you have a person, you could go through and you could individually set, you can individually set all their roles one at a time. All right. And you'd have to do that for every person in your court. I prefer to use titles. Um, and you can look at somebody on your court and you can look at their standings and all that good stuff and make sure that they don't have anything that they shouldn't have. But if you use title management, you can create a title and you can set the roles on based on that title and you can give people access based on their title, which is probably the best way to do it. So for example, if I wanted to make this a recruit level access, recruits get basically nothing. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> they don't need to look at the, the none of this, none of this stuff. They, they get bupkis. Uh, Station services, uh, factory manager, no. Rent, no, 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 absolutely not. Counting divisional, no. <laughs> uh, master, hangar access at headquarters. So I usually set up one division as my uh, recruit division. And then what we have here is view and take. So we give them view. And if you put your mouse over it just right, you can see query, take, query, take, right? And that's what we're saying. So they can look at and take from first division. They can look at usually fifth through sixth, then I usually leave seventh for uh, director and CEO access only. They can look at but cannot take. Uh, this prevents them from stealing stuff, uh, except for what you have set up for recruits, which realistically speaking is not that much normally <coughs> excuse me um, and then container access headquarters same thing take nothing else uh, hangar access base stat now this is again if you have a separate base just for recruits that you say okay if I set this as your home base you can access everything this allows us to give a, a recruit a wider selection of modules and access at a specific location, say for, it say it's a missioning hub so that they can earn ISK or whatever they're doing. You can set it up. And I always leave one of them completely off just because there's always gonna be something you need to store somewhere. Okay. Container access based at, same deal. So yeah, that's fine. You can take everything from the recruit station hangar. And in my main corp, I don't think our recruit station hangar has more than, I want to say like 10 million esque worth of stuff in it. I mean, it's just not that much. Uh, whereas our safe has, you know, billions of esque worth of stuff. And if somebody got in there and had access to it and could take it, we would all be pretty much screwed. It's not a pretty, not a pretty thing. Okay, so hangar access, uh, other, I leave it all blank. And then uh, container access other, again, no access at all. So this keeps them as a recruit, whatever your your re recruitment period is. Usually we give them like 30 to 60 days, depending on uh, how they are with the corp and whether or not we trust them or not. Um, but then they have very, very limited access to stuff. Um, and that's just one of those things we need to keep in mind and we think about it okay so 
now when we give somebody the recruit title, yes, I want to save those changes. Um, do, 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 do. So if if I go to here to titles, uh, you see there's recruit. I've already got it, um, but I can set my title here as recruit. Basically, I would just give them the recruit title. I would just there'd be a checkbox. I'd check it, um, and they would then have only that much access. Maybe I'll throw throw another alt in this corp just to let you guys see how that works. And then you hit apply and OK, and you're done. Um, and what you want to make sure that you do is you have to have all your roles set by uh, title. So you don't give them any roles outside of their title. That's it. Um, OK, so and then you just you can have up to 16 layers of this. So all the way up to like a full director status, basically. So if you get a, a trusted member, you know, and this is somebody you've flown with for a while and you give them, you know, expanded access. So back back to general and you have to do this each title one at a time. OK, so at that point I might say, OK, you can do that. You can do this. You can do this. Yeah, no, because they could just let anybody in. Not cool. Junior accountant, fitting manager, that's fine. Uh, contract manager, no. Start, no, no. Don't let them steal stuff still, because, you know, then there's further levels where you'd give somebody a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. Um, basically, and what you do is, what I consider is, I take the roles of, oops, excuse me, of the prior level and I figure out what more they need. Trader, no. Security, no. Rent, no, 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 no. Uh, accounting. Generally, I leave accounting off for almost everybody. Uh, my industry people have access to a specific uh, wallet, but that's it. Uh, so this guy, since we trust these guys, they can take everything up through, say, 6th division. And we might have say usually what I do in sixth is I leave it as a query but I leave off take uh, and I set this up for like blueprint copies or blueprints or whatever so if they want to build stuff and we have a blueprint library they can use it they can use it um, but they can't take it because blueprints are worth a lot a lot um, and then you know when you look at roles versus grantable roles that's another thing you want to look at um, same thing and I just you have to go through the whole, this whole rigmarole, whole rigmarole to get all of this stuff set up. All right, container access, same deal. Can we expand their access up to six division? Hangar access, same deal. And and again, since we trust this guy. We can just kind of give them the same, just expand their level of access to stuff. But we leave something because you only trust people so much. It's Eve. <laughs> All right, take, 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 and actually, man, eh, doesn't matter. It's based at uh, hangar access other. Same deal. And there's no reason to restrict unless you have a specific base that has all your stuff in it. Um, but I would say that you want to make sure that the roles are pretty pretty much equivalent across the board. Oops. And container access, same deal. So once you get all that stuff set up, You'll have a number of titles that you can apply to people. Um, and then this allows you to look at who's done what uh, in your corp by member. So when they joined, what they've done. Uh, you can make wallet medals and stuff for your corp members here uh, in which cost isk to make that you pay out of the corp wallet. All right. 
uh, if, if that's your thing. Uh, these are the applications that people have um, put into the corp. Um, and you'd right click them and allow them to come into the corp if you have the rules to do so. Um, getting role management right is super, super important. All right. And if you had offices, you could set bases as well. Um, and I usually always do it right from here, right from here. Edit member, give them a title. Roles are um, always assigned by title. Don't give them any extra roles outside of that. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna regret it later because you'll it'll it's harder to keep track of who's got access to what at that point in time. If everybody has a specific title that tells you this person has access to X Y Z, then you you can just remove the title or change them to a different title to restrict their access or to grant them further access. Um, okay, so uh, standings is where we have corp contracts out there, liked and disliked. Um, and that's just by, you know, if, like show this guy over here, I don't know his corporation, but I could add standings to his corporation. Come on. Come on, Eve. There we go. Uh, on the relationship tab, just by tasty beverage, uh, add contact, and then I can set my standings wherever I want. So I can make them terrible, add a corp contract, contact, and bam, there they are. And this is where you manage all that stuff. So, <clears throat> so I delete, I can remove them from the corp contract. Contact. Yes. Um, and that's how you manage who you like, who you don't like. Um, if you know of pirates or hostile people, you can set their standing so that your corp, member, corp members know what's up. Um, you can also set a rules of engagement for your corporation and use standings to manage who you're allowed to shoot at and when. Um, so like if I set blue standings to a corporation, I would just basically be telling my corp members, you can't shoot these guys. And theoretically, we would be in the same place. Wars, um, if you've de declared wars against people, um, <clears throat> this this is where those will show up. Um, if they if you kill people while in in combat, this they will show up here. If you lose if your pilots lose ships, that shows up here. It allows you to go through real quick and look into who's losing what. Um, politics, votes, and sanctional actions. Uh, you can propose a vote for anything you want. So create shares, declare war, expel member. So if somebody you don't like somebody. Uh, general vote, you know, I don't know what it's for, lock blueprints, unlock blueprints, all that good stuff. Declare war is probably the one that you use the most. And you pick a corporation and you... Uh, Mobeb. No. Uh, tasty. Tasty beverage. So we're going to declare war on tasty beverage. Oh, it won't let me. <laughs> uh, and so you'd propose a vote and then everybody would get a chance to vote on it and yes or no and after 24 hours when the vote's done uh, it would become a sanctionable action and then the CEO is the only one who can actually make it happen uh, in effect and not in effect so not in effect it would show up here and you'd right click and you'd say yes Assets. This shows your corporation's offices. I have none impounded stuff. That means if you had a, a station or something where you don't have an office and wound up with an asset that wasn't a delivery of some sort, that's where it would wind up. I had a court member's pod show up there once after they biomassed their character. Whoops. I've moved this mic stand into a different place and I keep bumping it. I'll have to figure it out. Uh, in space would be control towers, deliveries. Um, if you open the delivery window, if you buy something on the market at, or on contract or whatever, it'll show up in this as a delivery so that you can come, you can grab it, and you can take it away uh, without actually having to have a hanger here. Lockdown and search. Alliances. Uh, if you want to create alliances, this is where you would do so. If you want to join an alliance, this is where you would go to do so. Uh, this is where you can look at how what alliances are top of the heap and how many members they have and all that good stuff. Goon Swarm is always 
six thousand, whatever. Um, anyway, so that's the corporation window, and I'm in need of a tasty beverage myself because my throat is sore from all that talking. It's not exactly the most exciting thing in Eve, um, but I we do have a unicorn. We have a unicorn on our thing. Um, <clears throat> be aware that once you are in a corporation, uh, that corporation can be war decked. So you need to be careful of that. So, all right. So with that, I am going to um, pause this bit now. Grab myself a Helios here and go out and see what I can get into some trouble. Um, maybe that'll be kind of like the format we go with. Like half of its tutorial, half of its exploration and killing stuff. I know you guys want to see more PvP. Um, I did get a great suggestion that I like. Um, to do a tournament or something, but I thought what might be even better is if I could set up a date and time where we could live stream um, a, a newbie ship swarm. Uh, and if you haven't been part of or seen one of those, it's absolutely the most fun you'll ever have. Bidding out uh, <laughs> the most expensive newbie ship I've ever flown uh, it cost me like 20 million modules, 30 mil. I don't know. It was pretty darned expensive I had some faction stuff on there it was awesome and um, it was it was just a whole lot of fun to just grab a really really crap frigate with one maybe two guns go out and start shooting stuff it was just a hoot we took down a lot of stuff that just did not see us coming so it was great but I thought maybe that might be fun so we, we can look at that and see if there's a time where we can set up a date where we might be able to do that as a live stream event um, and then record that, obviously, and put it up as a video on demand for YouTube. Okay, guys, um, so I'm going to go out and get some exploration done, get a tasty beverage, and uh, hopefully catch up with you guys here in a little bit. All right, so I have scanned down something that looks exceedingly difficult. <laughs> I took a poke in with my Helios, and... Uh, Gate to the defense perimeter was loaded with lots of nasty things. Towers and battleships and all kinds of just wonderful things. There's five people in system. They're all docked up. So that sh we should be relatively safe. But the second I get in here, I'm going to be aligning back to station. Kicking on my uh, micro warp drive, pulling some range, getting the drones out. That's the that's the current plan. And stations. Line two, kick that on. Get some range. Get some range. I need to get these guys targeted down. Gonna need that on already. Oh my goodness. Alright, see if I can kill that. Thrones. Let's get the da -da 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 Hobbs out. Good god. Let's get the drones back in. Oh my god, epic, epic. Ah, uh, I can't tank this. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't even get a drone out. Holy crapola. I, I, wow. Oh my goodness. Do you see that? All right, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh my gosh, I'm gonna look at the locks <laughs> real quick, uh, see what was going on, and uh, it's all those towers. Okay, I'm gonna dock up, I'm gonna take a look at these logs. And I'm going to reformulate a plan, and then I will be right back with you guys. 
All right, so I've done the math. Um, <laughs> and it's awesome. Math is so great. Um, DPS coming at me tops out around 300 with the occasional big shot from one of those battleships doing between three to 600 every so often. So it's, it's not a constant, but roughly about 300 DPS. <laughs> I'm capable of repping about 100 DPS as it stands. Um, and that all, this is just landed damage, so that includes my resists and all that good stuff. So basically I have a few options. Number one, I could increase my capacity to rep that damage to the point where I was repping more than the DPS coming at me. It's an option. Two, I could increase my resists uh, to decrease the total damage coming at me so that my reps could hold up, but I'd have to sh sh shuffle off around um, 200 DPS to make that happen. Or three, I can jump into the uh, Helios and go find something else to do. <coughs> um, so yeah, so yeah. That room, um, honestly, I don't think I could take it with my skills in that Myrmidon. I would need um, a completely different ship, completely different fit. It's just those sentry towers do way too much damage. I can't really tank them, so I need to find. I would I would need something else. So okay, I'm gonna go take a peek, see what I can find, and hopefully, um, be bear. Yes. <coughs> oh my goodness! Excuse me. I was about to say, hopefully be right back at this, and I will talk to you guys soon. Alright, I think I got it. I had to strip off one of my guns and change out the code breaker for an analyzer. Found a magnetic site. A um, couple jumps over. Systems seem pretty calm, so we're going to try it. I need to go through... I've been back and forth with these gates a lot, so um, there's no bubbles on them. Um, these guys are all in station. I'm not that concerned about it. <laughs> Yeesh. Get that armor back up. See, it, was, it hit structure at some point. That's how my tank was being abused. Abused. Alright. Alright. With any luck, so I have an analyzer, and a salvager, because it's a magnetic site. That's the kind of stuff you find in those. Uh, I don't think we've done one of those yet, so that's that's nice. It's exciting. Trained this skill. I don't want it to go to waste. All right, so we go through BMV-P, the old jump. Hold cloak when you're on the other side. Keep an eye out, see what's going on. This guy was out earlier, but... Uh, I didn't see him in a ship. We're all clear, and we go to X-M2LR. Now this is a pretty active system, so I'm going to keep a real close eye on what's going on. Um, whoop, whoop, microphone again. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be a pretty good thing, and I, I hope I can take it. I didn't pop in in the Helios just because I was afraid that if I went in and didn't do anything, the site would despawn on me. So I want to make sure that I actually get a chance to run it. Um, and if nothing else, there's some combat sites in the same system that I've bookmarked. So hopefully everything will still be there. Ah, he's in a rapier. Which I could probably kill. I could probably do that. But he's at another gate. He's somewhere. Probably in a safe or a moon or pos or something. Alright. And jump. Hold cloak. Keep your eyes out. See what's going on. Ah, oh, it's calmed down in here. It's got quieter. And ruined Serpentis Monument. Ancient ruins stand silent and still in the cold vacuum of space. A sober reminder of times long since past. An analyzer module will be vital in gaining deeper understanding of the numerous artifacts located here and finding something of value amongst the rubble. Alright. 
So off we go. Off we go. Um, and the stuff you get out of this is um, you can get blueprints, you can get um, books that will aid in T2 research, um, beta chips or whatever. I forget what they're called exactly, but they're they're pretty valuable uh, once you get them on the market. All right, we got skier, clear scan, and three admirals. And let's see, let's align to that customs office over there. And hammer time. And they got me. Okay, go get them, boys. Oh. Is he coming fast enough to catch me? All right, I gotta get closer. This I can tank. And I'm back to that Stargate in a moment. Come on. We can do this. There we go. Line, kick on the micro warp. Okay. One pulse on that. Keep an eye on the scan. be going fast enough now that I am I should remain well out of their range one more pulse I'm trying to manage that cap <laughs> I'm gonna lose my lock on them but my drones should do their thing so okay much better, much better. That's the next kind of big ship. It's a Dominic's battleship. Definitely going to want one of these eventually. Um, I think I'm definitely going though for the uh, Ishtar first. Ishtar first. They're still doing a little damage, aren't they? Not too bad. All right, this guy's going down pretty quick. Um, don't know what'll spawn after these ones, but uh, oh, pilgrim. eating monster as we have already discussed I think at least once probably at the KRD5 Stargate probably uh, actually I can find out real quick like get out of this KRD5 is where is KRD5 If I JRD, which is what I'm aligned to, like a schmuck. Nope, not on that gate. Okay. So he's behind me somewhere. Uh, 
Um, if you change the angle, you can narrow down the direction he is in. Mm, he may have cloaked. He may have cloaked. I'm going to keep moving this direction for now. Uh, I want to keep off of the warp endpoint. If I can get my drones to listen to me. Ah, they do listen. They'll at least return from that range. That's good. killed here and I kind of ignore my cap. Just give it one shot on the booster please. Let you guys dock up real quick. I didn't see any probes out. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. It. Let's go up. Let's see if these guys are in the same corp or alliance. Uh, eyes on Mercury. Necessarily working together. Let's see if these guys can get a little closer to me without me having to get closer to the pinpoint of this, uh, this site. So I need to get in drone range of that guy. At the same time, I don't want to be up warp in. To keep an eye on local. In lock range. This is a station system, so he could have just docked up. Uh, it's always a possibility. Alright, 
We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Go get him, boys. Realign to that gate. every now and again. Okay. Alright. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. We got plus one in system. Um, not in the same corpus as anyone else. Keeping an eye on your scan. Got this guy down starting armor. And uh, these are things that we can use our analyzer and or um, salvager on. So hopefully we'll be able to kill these battleships, survive. Um, thankfully it's a magnetic site, which is actually pretty difficult to scan down. It takes a little Nina Kovops. And I had not seen a single probe out. So I'm not a directly warpable target, which is good. Which is real good. But those are the things you got to really pay attention to. Is what are they shooting? In, you know, what are the what's going on in system? It's probably even more important than <laughs> what's my armor look like. And off. Ranged targets probably important too, but uh, I think for the most part, where's my out and what's going on around me? It's like just situational awareness. But you know, what's the battlefield situation like? And the cap is doing good. You know, I'm kiting out the damage just fine right now. This guy will blow up shortly. I hope. I don't see any rappers going on. Um, there's always a visual cue to let you know what they're doing. So, I mean, if we look at me, for example, and I kick on a rapper, see that shimmery. Uh, thing that goes, I don't know what you'd call it, pattern kind of goes over the ship. That's what a repper would look like. And, yep, he's repping. That's repping right there. It's the nanobots doing their work. And he's down. And he's down. One more battleship to deal with. That should be relatively easy. Get the drones to come back. Just in case we need to scoop them and run. Oh, Helios. Helios. Now that's something that would potentially scan me out. Keep a real close eye for probes. A real close eye for probes. Helios is how I found this site, so you know that they can do it too, obviously. Pilgrim back on scan. I'm starting to get nervous. Oh, one out of system. Alright, 
so since that he if he left system through the KD5 K5 just JRD gate um, I'm going to need to choose a different out so I'm probably gonna head towards this gate the B in the still no probes out still no probes out so I'm gonna get the drones back out As soon as this guy's in drone command range, I'll get the drones on and I'm going to align myself to a different outgate and uh, again watch this like a hawk. So we're back up, we're gaining, we're up to six in system. Our Helios pilot probably left. Back down to five. can do it. Come on. He's not like keeping range on me, is he? That would be very annoying if he was. Oh my god. Two capsules. Now that I'm not worried about. Okay, get in range of this guy. And they came through K5. Anathema, that's a scanning ship. Alright, down to four in system. Lock range on him. I'm lining my way out. Because I'm dumb, I left my. Three in system. That I feel better about. That I feel better about. Now back up to four. That's probably our pilgrim pilot. Probably our pilgrim pilot. Alright, come on. Pulse that a little bit. Pull some range, pull some range. Did he stop shooting at me? Is he shooting my drones? Well, that's hilarious. It's like a space stone hinge, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think he can hit my drones if that's what he's doing. Uh, he's certainly not shooting me anymore, though. So I can probably turn that off. Duh. So bad at that. God. That's just practice and repetition, though, I think. Um. <laughs> nope. It's sort of like um, StarCraft. You practice long enough. And uh, eventually you get better at it. Capsule, okay. Neat. Um, I actually may make it out of Bronze League before I die. That'd be pretty pretty crazy. And for whatever reason, there's these stuff floating in front of these rocks. Barren asteroids. Two more capsules. Looks like there was a fight recently. Another capsule. A whole lot of people coming through in capsules. people come through in capsules. Capsule's probably the one ship in EVE that you don't need to worry about. 
All right. Oh, man. Awesome. After all that drama. Whew. All right. Well, let's see. We'll go ahead and burn into this stuff. 80 kilometers away. Keep an eye out. Some nice bounties that aren't going to be uh, taxed. Ah, huh? so that that's good. Although, also somebody, um, somebody gave me a nice little uh, donation of this. I appreciate that. Loves bite ear for the uh, thought that the overview tutorial was useful. I'm glad it helped. And thank you for the ISK. I will use it to buy something expensive and probably get it blown up. It'll be awesome. Awesome. See? No taxes. No taxes. Bounty Prize Corporation tax doesn't exist. That's the part that I'm very excited about. All right. So let's get in there. Let's get in there and... Come on, drones. Get back. There we go. All right. All right, so um, I'm going to try to access this container. And see if it spawns any new baddies. Uh, if it does, then I will kill them all. If it does not, I will take what's inside. And bouncing around like this is always annoying to me. If you control space, you stop your ship. Stop your ship and you don't bounce around like an idiot. Keep an eye out. Looking for probes. We've got a lot in local. Need to get that skill up so this works better. Helios back on scan. Scan, but again, it's a cloaky ship doesn't mean anything. So we need to keep a real close eye out for those. Oh man, I wish that would, this would go faster. That's it. I've got to train this. If I'm going to be out here and doing this stuff, I need all these skills to be as fast as I can get them. I mean, I am right now training cruiser to five so that I can get into a hack, but it's just making me a sitting duck out here. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. And if I have to abandon the drones, I abandon the drones. This, the drones cost less than my ship. Oh, I accessed it. And malfunctioning shield emitters. Not worth a whole lot. <laughs> so that's salvage. Yeah, that's uh, not worth much. Not worth a whole lot. Didn't spawn any more baddies, though. Uh, and it's not even the ones I need. I need parts for armor rigs. Oh, crap. <sighs> I'm so bad. I'm terribly awful. You guys really don't pay attention to anything I say, because I'm clearly not very good at it. Oh, dead. Hilarious. Alright, still nothing. Still nothing. No 
No probes. Probes is really what I'm worried about. See what that was worth. Oh, terrible. Terrible. It's worth nothing. Well, they're not always worth money. They can be, though. The rare time that they give you something, they give you something really good. Okay, okay, capsule. Capsule, capsule. A lot of capsules today. Alright. That's on. Stop the ship. Too complex. I don't have the skill to open it. Oh, now I feel just awful. All that. All that and, and oh. Oh. There's probably something worth a lot of isk in that. And I don't have a high enough skill level. Oh, I'm going to go home and cry. Oh, that's terrible. I almost want somebody to come blow me up now. Not in a rookie ship, though. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> no. Oh, well. All right. I don't think I'm going to get any more spawns on this. And I seem to be relatively safe in system now. So uh, I'm going to do my best to get more stuff out of here. But clearly... Mmm. Mmm. That just burns. Um, anyway. Uh, I'm going to loot up the rest of this stuff and uh, get this video edited and put together so I can get it uploaded. Um, hopefully we'll see you guys again soon. I'll be putting together like a little announcement video or something um, to let you guys know when um, I'd like to get together for a, uh, a newbie ship uh, swarm it's fun um, you can fit them with tech 2 or faction if you're really crazy uh, and you can actually do quite a bit of damage my favorite a rookie ship is the Galente one because you can fit two tech 2 drones per ship um, and I have I mean 500 subscribers even if we get 10% that's a lot that's a lot that's a lot a lot so, um, so yeah, if we can get, you know, 50 people in noob ships tearing, tearing through space and blowing stuff up, it'll be a good time. It'll be hilarious. Um, so I'll get that out and, uh, let you guys know what's going on. Uh, but thanks for watching and, uh, we will see you guys again real soon.